Sometimes we just need a little tough love with our curly hair. If you're feeling really frustrated with your curls, maybe you're lost or you're wanting to give up on your curly hair journey, these are some things that you might need to hear. We're gonna get ready together today and I'm gonna walk you through my day two refresh routine and share lots of tips and tricks. My name is Gina and welcome back to my channel. Here we talk all things naturally curly hair. I love simplifying things, talking about the science of hair and helping you problem solve with your curls. So let's get started. So here's how my day two curls are looking before refreshing. I'm about to go get ready, but my first harsh truth about curly hair is that you'll never be able to get rid of the frizz and it doesn't look as bad as you think. So frizz is always going to be there, especially by the end of the day and by day two and day three, our hair is not going to look as good as it did on wash day. Now, if you were previously straightening your hair, you probably are used to your hair looking the same mostly every single day, but with curly hair, it just tends to look worse as the days go on, unless if you are blessed with really great hair that looks amazing for about a week, but that's not most of us. Your hair is going to get frizzy as the days go on. Our hair starts to lose moisture, it starts to evaporate, the products even start to dissolve from our hair. If you look closely at my hair, I actually have quite a bit of frizz going on, even though it doesn't look like it. A lot of times it is just lighting that kind of hides it and the really nice camera quality. Let me turn off my lights though, and I will show you more up close. I don't even know if the camera can really pick it up because it kind of tends to blur frizz, but I definitely have frizzy areas in my hair. Now this is actually a good day two hair and I call it a good day two hair because it actually has really good curl clumps. The curls are still intact. I don't need to redefine or restyle curls, but I do need to tame some frizz if I want my hair to look you know, better again. However, I am totally happy with how this looks. I typically would not even refresh this. I would just leave it because I'm actually staying home today. So I would not worry about refreshing this, but I did want to show you a refresh for this video, which is why I'm going to do an easy refresh routine. Before I do my makeup and refresh my curls, I wanted to quickly show you just some of my skincare products that I use in the morning. It's only three things. I keep it very simple with skincare and sometimes I just do two things. I already cleansed with a little bit of my CeraVe hydrating cream to foam cleanser. I usually use this at night and in the morning. It's really good at removing makeup. Highly recommend that one. And then I usually go in with the Dime Hyperglow Serum. This is basically a vitamin C serum. I just started using this not too long ago, but it's really good for preventing dark spots. So I just do a couple of drops on my face like that and then rub it in. Then I go in with my Dime Wonder Screen. This is a tinted sunscreen, it has SPF 30. I have the medium shade, I always use this. It helps kind of even out my skin tone since I self tan my body, but not usually my face, especially in the fall and winter time. So I just do a couple pumps of this. It goes on really nice and it does not feel greasy. Our next harsh truth about naturally curly hair is that curly hair takes time, effort, and maintenance if you want it to thrive. This is something that is really hard to accept with curly hair, but unfortunately curly hair can just be more maintenance than straight hair. Now you can definitely have a really low maintenance routine and you don't have to put a ton of time into your curls, but if you really want them to thrive or if you're having problems with your curls, such as dryness or maybe buildup or a lot of frizz, or limp curls, like those sort of issues require time and effort. Like you have to actually treat those issues if you want your curls to thrive. Now, if you just do a very simple routine and you don't have curl issues, then that's amazing. And I love that for you, but most of us do have to put a little bit of time and effort into our curls. It doesn't have to be complicated though, and it doesn't have to take up all of your time, but you will need to put some thought into your wash days. And that's what I'm here to help do and to help simplify things. But healthier hair is a lot easier to maintain. So know that it does get easier in time. If you're still kind of trying to get your curls back, it's going to get easier as your hair gets healthy. When my hair was damaged, it was so much harder to manage. Even when I just had a little bit of damage hanging on to my ends, my hair was so much harder to manage because of those damaged ends. And once I got those fully cut off, my hair was so much easier to manage. My hair lasted longer. I had to do less refreshing and that saved me time during the week. You shouldn't be washing your hair every single day with curly hair because that just takes too much time. And if you are having problems that you just cannot get fixed with your curls, I recommend checking out my curl coaching program because you can meet with me and I will help you diagnose your curls in real time and give you step-by-step -step solutions that are catered towards your exact needs because that really makes it easier. It takes the guesswork out of it and we can problem solve with your curls together. 
together to hopefully get you an easier routine. And most of the time in those coaching sessions, I am helping you simplify and pare down your routine. I'm all for an easy low maintenance routine, but it does take effort. Now I'm gonna do some quick makeup before we get into the refreshing. I'm just going in with the Tarte Shape Tape Cloud coverage. This is basically like a very lightweight foundation. This has SPF 15 in it as well, and I get the shade light neutral or light medium neutral. I will link everything for you down below, but I love Tarte Cosmetics and I like having makeup that looks very natural and skin-like, and this definitely does. You can probably already tell the difference. I just like to even out my skin tone. For my under eyes, I usually use two things, one being the Bobbi Brown Corrector Stick. I have pretty bad at dark circles just from allergies and stuff. And then for my actual coverage, I go in with the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. So I actually do both of these, but on days where I don't need much, I will just do this corrector stick it has like a pinkish color. I have mine in the shade C light bisque. Just for some more coverage, that's why I go in with the Tarte Shape Tape and a little goes a long way with this stuff because it's very pigmented. Then I use the Tarte Creaseless Setting Powder. It has this little tiny puff with it. This is the only thing that's actually made a difference in setting my under eye concealer. I always struggle with creasing specifically on the lid and this actually helps. Next is just the Tarte face powder to set the face. I also love cream blush because it looks super natural. This one is from Tarte. I wanted something very natural. This is in the shade Ocean Girl. I'm gonna move on to eye makeup, but let's get into the next harsh truth about curly hair. Most people's curly hair changes with age, and most people's curly hair will thin out with age. Then I'm using the Merit Volumizing Brow Pomade in the shade Light Brown. This is just a tinted brow gel. This is all I usually do to my brows. But this harsh truth about curly hair with our hair changing and thinning out over time has been really hard for me to accept. So I can show you some photos of what my hair used to look like. My hair was so much thicker and much longer. When I was in high school, I had like twice the amount of hair and I was still straightening and doing all the things. I would go back between straight and curly, but it never really looked as good as it could curly, but it was definitely much thicker. That was the main advantage that I had then is my hair was thicker. I was able to actually grow it longer and I'm just not able to do that anymore. I'm now 31, I'm about to turn 32. Now there's so many factors that go into hair loss that we won't get into in this video. Most of the time it comes from internal factors. So from things like hormonal changes, nutrition, nutrient deficiencies, medications, illnesses, the list goes on and on. It's usually always internal versus like something we're doing externally to our hair. So that's why consulting with a doctor or a dermatologist is really best in that case. And I'm sure most of you can relate that your hair just doesn't look as thick as it used to when you were younger. So aging is just going to happen. It's part of life and our hair is just going to get thinner and probably not hold on to its length as good. And we're also probably going to get grays and our hair is going to show that aging process as well, just like our skin. So I have a lot of grays. Um, I hope you all enjoyed the video that I posted last week about how to manage gray curly hair because it's definitely an entirely different beast when it comes to managing our curls. It's more unruly, so we have to learn how to adjust our routine, but we also have to learn how to adjust our expectations with our curls as we age. I cannot expect to have super long, thick, curly hair anymore. I have to keep a shorter haircut in my hair because if I don't, my hair will look very sparse and thin on the ends. If I try and grow it out longer than this, it just doesn't look good. So I really had to let go of having really long hair and let go of that thought that long curly hair is better. It's not always better. That's another harsh truth about curly hair. There's nothing wrong with having short hair and sometimes that's just what's needed. If you want your hair to look thicker, if it is thinning, you might wanna try a shorter haircut. I also get a blunt cut without any layers that helps my ends look a little bit thicker too. So. That's something I recommend if you are struggling with thinning and your ends are very thin. For eyeliner, I'm using the Tarte Quick Stick. It just has an eyeliner on one end and then like a cream shadow on the other that you can use like in the inner corners. I usually go with pencil liner because it looks more natural and I can create like a small little wing pretty easily. Then I usually take just a flat shaped brush like this and I will go in and just kind of smudge it out that way there's not any harsh lines. And then I just kind of flick the wing out. Fun fact, if you didn't know, this used to be a makeup beauty channel. So if you want to see myself in uh, college when I was doing makeup content, you can check out those old videos. My makeup style has definitely changed. It's much more minimal 
and simple because let's face it, half the time I'm not even going anywhere. Maybelline Lash Sensational, my all time favorite mascara that I've used for years. Last but not least are lips, and I usually use these Maracuja Juicy Lip Creams from Tarte. I also switch around, sometimes I'm using like these e.l.f. Core Lip Shines, I use those quite a bit. They're just not quite as long lasting for filming days. This is in the shade Iris, by the way. I will link this along with all the makeup products down below. So that's the final makeup look, very easy and simple. It usually only takes me about 10 minutes to do in the morning, which is nice. So I'm finally ready to refresh my curls. I'm just gonna take this headband out. I can link this for you down below, but this is what I wear most days, or I just pin these pieces back out of my face with little claw clips because I don't like my hair kind of falling in my face all day. And I also wanna show you how I separate large curl clumps because that's mostly what I have going on here today is pretty large curl clumps that need to be separated and I'll show you why I have so many curl clumps. Products that I used for my wash day yesterday was the Weed Ed Advanced Climate Control Feather Light Volumizing Foam. I used this, then I brush styled it with the Bounce Curl Edge Lift Volume Brush. This is mainly why I have so many clumps. And then I scrunched in some of the Weed Ed Climate Control Stronger Hold Gel on each section. So I wanted to try a different method of not thoroughly coating my hair in this and mainly using the foam and then just kind of topping off each section with this just to see if I got better results. I definitely got less hold, but it still looks really good. Like I definitely call this a win when my day two still looks very nice and clumped like this. It's just a little too clumped. The products that you use on wash day make the biggest difference in how your hair turns out on day two. Most of the time it's from not using a strong enough hold gel when your hair doesn't look great on day two or it's from styling techniques. While I go around and separate some of these curl clumps just with dry hands, let's talk about my next harsh truth about naturally curly hair, and that is that products are not always the answer, it's often styling techniques. So many of you that I have talked through like in my coaching programs are already using really great products, but you just haven't quite nailed down how to apply them or maybe you're not using enough, or you're not using them in the right order, or you're layering on too many products and you're not getting the results that you want. And after I talk with you all about how to really pare down your routine, how to properly apply products, like I usually talk through in these sessions in detail, like tell me exactly how much water is in your hair when you are applying your products. Tell me how you apply them. What steps do you go through when you're putting your products on and what styling techniques? And that will usually reveal where the issue is because sometimes it's just how you are applying them. The majority of these results and the hair that you see right here is from that bounce curl brush. I have done almost the same routine in a different video and my hair looked completely different. I will put a photo up right here of how my hair looked when using these same products together and it was definitely different than today. And that's because of that bounce curl brush. A lot of times it is the brush, which is a styling technique. So this volume brush has the grooves on it, which really helps to clump the hair. And this actually creates smaller clumps because the grooves are more narrow. Brush styling makes the biggest difference for me. And that's the main reason why I do it is because I get more even curl clumps and it also lasts so much longer, which is why they're so clumped today that I'm kind of having to separate them. I also always get these little thick curl clumps underneath. I will usually just separate them. If you have tangles, you can also try using a little bit of oil or something like the Curlsmith Shake and Shine. Spray some of that on your hands or on the curl and then separate the curls and that will help give you some slip and also help sort of provide a barrier on the hair underneath so that way it doesn't get tangled because sweaters and collars like this one will definitely kind of rough up the curls and cause matting underneath. So now that we're going into winter, you definitely have to be mindful of that. I'm just gonna go ahead and wet my hands with my spray bottle. Ideally on a day two refresh, you want to just use water. If you used a good gel on wash day, like this Weed Ed gel, I'm able to refresh with just water and you should kind of feel the product in your hair when you're adding water. Like it almost feels the same as it does on wash day. When I add water, I feel like a slippery feeling, like the gel is still in my hair because those products are still in your hair from wash day. So now my hands are just a little bit damp and I'm basically just going to pick up the frizzy curls and then just smooth over them. So when I refresh, I do a lot of smoothing. I'm not really breaking up this curl clump because it still looks good. I'm just picking it up and smoothing over it. And a lot of times my frizz is from right here at the root. So I will 
place my hands right at the root and then smooth it down and I will kind of finger coil it to tuck it in. I almost forgot my scalp serum. I've been using this every single morning. It's from Living Proof. It's the Scalp Care Density Serum. This has been helping to regrow some of my temple areas right here where I had some hair loss and I've noticed that some hair is growing in like it looks more filled in in this area. I still need to share those before and after photos. I've been kind of tracking my progress. Okay, so back to my point about it not being just about products and it's more so styling techniques. I wanted to bring this up because so many of you will buy more products trying to solve certain issues. Like you layer on a lot of products I've noticed or you're not liking your results from using a gel so then you'll just switch to something else. But there's some other things you need to try and tweak first before you roll out that product. That's why I have my curly hair tracker, that spreadsheet, because I can pinpoint exactly which technique made a difference. Because when we're doing testing, we want to, you know, keep all the variables the same, but just change one thing that way you can actually tell what works. So in the tracker, you can log things like how much product that you used, or if you micro plopped or not, or if you brushed your gel through, like those are the kinds of things that do make a big difference. So for example, putting your gel in first, then brush styling is going to give you more even coverage, more frizz control, but it might reduce your volume because you're getting a more thorough application of gel. Whereas yesterday I did foam, then brush styled then just scrunched in the weed edge gel and I did that because I wanted to try and get less coverage of the gel to see if I would get more volume and also to see if I could find a better way of applying it for those of you that struggle with the weed edge gel weighing your hair down so maybe try using less of it try it by itself because it's very moisturizing it doesn't even need a curl cream by the way I'm still just using water and I'm barely dampening my hands I'm just using the water to kind of smooth the frizz that's underneath and see how much better that it looks already and this will dry down with a cast which is why I love this gel so much you don't even have to apply more. I will go in with more gel usually by day like three or so, or if I find an area where I just didn't have enough hold, maybe I didn't get the gel on thoroughly, or maybe the ends have kind of like the products evaporated out of the ends, then I will add a little bit more sometimes, but usually I'll just take the gel and mix it with a little water. So I'll actually just show you that. So I put a little bit of gel right here on my palms. I'm just going in with some water, mixing it together, and that will help dilute the gel which will make it more light, I guess, so that way you're not layering on so much product on a refresh day. Next harsh truth about naturally curly hair is most of us can't have it all, such as volume, definition, and fullness, and longevity. Like you have to sometimes prioritize one thing or another and then see how your hair does, and then you can always make little tweaks here and there. But if you want a ton of volume and fullness in your hair, you're probably going to have some frizz or you're gonna have a little bit less definition, especially if you have lower density hair like me. You can't have both thick, chunky curl clumps and fullness because the more clumped your hair is, the less full it's going to look, which is why I'm actually separating the clumps for this refresh day because I want to achieve a little bit more volume for my day two hair. I'm separating some of those curl clumps that are like grouping back together. That's kind of the fun thing about naturally curly hair is we can, adjust things to change up our look. Like you don't have to be bored with one look in the exact same routine, change some things up, which is kind of why I did a video recently for more volume and fullness. I wanted to see, you know, if I did all of my best volume tips, how much volume could I get? And I definitely had more volume. I'm still doing my other routine, just like I did yesterday for more definition and clumps but I wanted to just try something different and change up my look. So I'm gonna diffuse real quick, just like anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute or two, just to kind of shrink everything back up. I don't always do this and you can totally air dry, but if you use quite a bit of water in your hair or if you struggle with like your ends looking stringy and uneven, take your diffuser and just kind of hit it for a second and that heat will reset the gel cast and it will also help shrink everything back up so your hair is even. But if I didn't use much water at all, sometimes I can just air dry, it just depends. But I just wanted to show you this technique because Diffusing on a refresh day has made the biggest difference for me and my refresh days actually lasting. Can you all see a difference in the side that I just diffused versus this one? This one still looks fine, but you see how some of the ends are kind of hanging straight 
and it's a little bit more elongated. Diffusing just kind of helps to shrink everything back up. So here's how my hair looks after refreshing. Really happy with these results. I basically just got the cast back by mainly just using water. But my next harsh truth about naturally curly hair is that your curl problems are not from one single ingredient and you don't need to be fearing ingredients or avoiding certain ingredients. This is something we all tend to fall into the trap to when we first start learning about naturally curly hair and diving into curly hair content because there's so much fear mongering around ingredients and I have you know, definitely talked about avoiding certain ingredients back when I was just learning about curls. But now that I've learned so much more and taken a more scientific approach, I have realized that ingredients are not bad. It's just sometimes how products are formulated of why we don't get the results that we want, or again, how you're applying them. It's not just because of one single ingredient and certain ingredients are not bad and everyone shouldn't avoid certain ingredients but there are some things to look out for and I'm a huge advocate of understanding ingredients and knowing how to read labels. That's something that I also teach in my coaching sessions is just how to kind of read through ingredient labels so that way you can identify what products will work for you based on some of those ingredients. But avoiding things like glycerin, for example, that is one that so many people are afraid of using and they try and avoid it in all of their products because they're afraid of frizz, but it's not the glycerin that's causing the frizz for you. It's the lack of hold in the product or it's the lack of conditioning ingredients if glycerin's making your hair dry in the winter. I've actually debunked that in a whole nother video I can link for you down below about glycerin drying out your hair in the winter time. It is true that glycerin is a very powerful humectant that does draw in water, but most of our products have other ingredients in them or the good ones do that help block out humidity. The Weed Ed gel is a great example. This gel is literally designed for heat and humidity and it has glycerin in it. And I've heard from so many of you all of oh, this has glycerin, it's not gonna work in humidity, but we're not cosmetic formulators. The cosmetic formulators who designed this knew what they were doing and put glycerin in here so that way it wouldn't dry out your hair. If I use glycerin-free gels, my hair gets very dry. Now you might have great results with glycerin-free gel. Definitely keep using it if you have found that that has worked for you. But if you're feeling overwhelmed and stressed about ingredients, and it's definitely hard to find products that are glycerin free and it's just more limiting, then don't worry about the ingredients as much and look at the entire formulation because there's other ingredients in here that will counter the effects of glycerin and still block out humidity. So it's combined with other emollients in it. It has shea butter in it. It has hydrolyzed proteins, which help to trap in moisture so your hair doesn't get dry. That's another one that there's a lot of misconceptions about that proteins make your hair dry and they don't. They actually help to hold in moisture. So once you understand how these work a little bit more, then you have a better understanding of how they will behave in your hair. But my point is that we just can't look at an ingredients label, spot one ingredient and rule that product out. That's super limiting and overwhelming. I cannot imagine trying to find products if you want to avoid like a million things, you're gonna be really limited. And we're already limited with products, I feel like. It's so hard to find really good curly hair products that solve all of our needs. So the last thing we need to do is make it harder by limiting out ingredients. So I just wanted to give you an up close at my after results. Let me just scrunch out some more of this crunch, but you can definitely still see a little bit of frizz if you look closely, like right here. I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up, but I definitely still have some frizz. The hair is a little bit more separated, which is what I was going for. It was too clumped before. So now it has just a little bit more volume. It looks a little bit more stringy because I separated those curl clumps, but that's what I was going for again. I left a few curl clumps kind of large like this one and a few in the back. But overall, I'm really happy with these results. Let me know what you think down below. And if you're feeling frustrated with your curls not turning out good on refresh days, then I recommend the video I have all about reasons why your hair is not lasting. I cover all of the things that could be contributing to why you're not getting good refresh days. So I'll link that for you down below if you're interested. I wanted to show you my outfit real quick while I put on my earrings. These are just from Amazon. This um, pullover that I have on is actually from Pink Lily. I just got it recently, so I can put it down below. It should still be in stock, but this is like the most comfortable fall and winter pullover. It's so soft, like the material actually feels really nice. They also usually have 
sales and I do have a monthly code usually for Pink Lily. I will put that down below along with the link to this pullover. Okay, if you're still feeling frustrated with your curls and you can't get to the bottom of your hair issues, then I definitely recommend meeting with me so that way we can kind of dive into your whole routine, see what's going wrong and see if it's the products or maybe how you're applying them. You can check out my coaching program. I will have it linked for you down below. I have everything from email sessions that are very flexible and then two different options for live sessions as well, a 45 minute and a 90 minute where we go over every single step in your routine and I talk you through it and show you actually how to better take care of your curls to fix the issues that you're having. And I also include a follow-up guide so you have a full summary of notes, step-by-step step, and also any products. I also just opened up additional days and weekend days as well. So if you checked before and you couldn't find a time that worked for your schedule, definitely check now. And if you still can't find a time, just send me an email or a DM on Instagram and I will definitely open something up for you. If you wanna hear some more harsh truths for curly hair and some lessons that I had to learn the hard way in my curly hair journey, check out the video that I have linked right here on the screen. It's all about the mistakes that I made when I was first getting started with my curls. So that way you don't have to make them as well. So I will talk to you over there. Bye everyone.